Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, slowing down a little bit on making the videos, that's because I'm working on a number of um, projects uh, at work that are, are exciting and interesting. I can't really talk too much about them here, um, but they're taking up a little bit of time. Um, but, but anyway, if you follow my blog periodically, I will talk about them in addition to this Emacs stuff. Um, so today I wanted to do a video about something that I don't really use, um, but I'm trying to put into my workflow and if any of you use it, um, leave some notes in the comments um, or hey, make your own video and post it. That would be also really, really awesome, um, which is using the shell within Emacs. Now, I don't know why I don't use shells within Emacs. Um, maybe it's because I grew up with the PC revolution. So for the longest time, I was using um, an MS-DOS based machine. And so I would install um, I think it was the MKS Toolkit uh, for any of you old timers out there, Mortis Kern Toolkit, I think it was, which was um, a bunch of Unixy tools for DOS. So, you know, I wouldn't make it into a uh, multitasking operating system with processes and job control and all that, but it gave me my awk and my set and all of that stuff. And that was cool. And I had um, uh, Micro Emacs or Epsilon back in the day um, to get the basic editing. And uh, that, that might have been it. Um, maybe it was because uh, I don't know but uh, but it's something that I, I play with periodically like sometimes when I'm doing uh, flask development what I'll do is I will split the window like I'll do something like uh, where am I something like this and I'll put my source code up here and I might have a terminal over here where I'm actually running Flask for the web development. And um, I don't know what I have over here. For some reason I had three windows. I haven't done this in a while. But anyway, um, so I'm trying to use this more and there are a couple of options. One very simple one is shell. So you can just run that by meta x shell. I don't have the keys up because we're not typing all that much here. And uh, that's an honest to goodness shell. You know, um, this is running the Z shell. Um, you've got, uh, this is the directory I'm in and you can, um, you know, uh, you can, uh, if I control, well, let me just make this one window, uh, open a file. You'll notice that I'm in this directory. Um, if I CD up one, I am now in my root directory, which is kind of cool. Um, so I can uh, move around, I can do all my shell stuff, and I can also just use my Emacs commands in the directory I'm in. Uh, unfortunately, this falls down a little bit if I go, you know, like SSH to another machine. If I'm on another machine, then I'm still on my home machine. Notice that I've got, you know, all, well, you know, this stuff here, not. Uh, you know, not the stuff that I would see over here. Um, but of course, if you watch the other video before, you know that you can always do, uh, let's open timehop.png. You know, you can always use, um, you can always use uh, the, the tramp type SSH to open the files to get to places. But anyway, that's, um, Let's get out of that, let's get out of that. And that's the basic shell and it works really well and that's the one that I'm starting to use. Um, but there's also eShell. And eShell is really cool because it's all Emacs, it's built into Emacs, it'll run everywhere. Um, and the basics are the same, but you can do things like find file. You can run Emacs commands like find file and let's find file o.png and it opens the PNG file. So that's kind of cool. Of course, I could have done it, you know, this way just as well. Um, but the other really cool thing about um, eShell, besides being able to run Emacs commands right from within the shell just by typing them, uh, you can also do things like this. I can CD into a remote directory. And now if I find file, Z dot, uh, which one did I do? Um, time hop. I'm getting it remotely. I'm editing it remotely. Or I can, let's see if I can do control X, control F. Um, and yes, indeed, I can do it remotely. So this is really cool because since I'm CDing into a remote directory, it seems a little bit smoother than actually doing the, um, than actually doing um, the, SSH up top in the main window and then use the tramp mode stuff in the lower down. So, so I like this. This is really, really, really cool. 
and we can exit the shell from there, um, you know, just to get out of it. So um, both of these are really cool. I'm trying to work them into my workflow. And I just want to point out a couple other things I did. Um, one other thing I did is I made this change out of the virtual and wrapper package into, um, uh, into my Python config for support for um, uh, virtual the virtual environment stuff and um, this lets me if I'm in a regular terminal I installed virtual env wrapper in the terminal you know I'm under you under Linux and I can type work on to work on a virtual environment whatever it's not important if you don't use Python or whatever um, but I also made another sh uh, change also if you're noticing I also have some other changes in my config Hydra which is a really cool package I'll do a video on that later um, stuff that I'm playing around and testing with uh, personal key map um, and changing my key map a little bit but better shell was a package I found and better shell is cool because um, you can just go to the website um, and find it you can just install it this way but better shell lets you do control and then the the tick and it'll open a shell and then if you do control tick it'll also cycle through shells if you have multiple ones but you can also do control semicolon and I guess no that, that's bound to another thing in an org buffer so let's uh, let's do that about here uh, is it working here am I not typing the right key Let's go into another buffer and try it. There we go. Uh, so I guess org mode rebinds control semicolon. Um, but this asks me for a remote host. And let's go to a remote host. Um, it's using something else, so it doesn't have my .z shell RC populated. I have to check this out. I won't do anything here. But notice what I've got here. I've got, I'm in that remote directory with my terminal. Notice I've got time hop PNG. And notice when I do control XF, to find the file, time hop PNG. So this better shell, what it does is it takes care of connecting to the machine using your terminal, using your shell, but it, it kind of smooths out that remote editing feature. So I'm playing with this a little bit, and then there's control, uh, what do I get out of this? Uh, let's exit this, and the control regular one. Okay, I guess it's putting its own little configuration somewhere, so it's asking, uh, to set up a Z shell. Um, I'll have to see where that does it. Uh, notice that um, I'm on, should close that. Uh, I'm hitting the wrong key for that, that's why. All right, um, interesting, interesting. Okay, so anyway, I'm not gonna do this right now, um, but these are some of the shell packages that I'm playing with right now. They seem really, really cool. I'm trying to get into this workflow. Um, once again, I really encourage you to leave comments, particularly if you use a shell solution under Emacs, how you use it, why you find it useful. Um, and uh, hey, make a video. I'm using OBS Studio, it's not that hard. Um, another package I'd love to see people make uh, videos on are, is um, DRED. I use it a little bit now, but, um, but I'd love to see an expert with this. But in any event, um, that's this video, uh, shells under Emacs, very, very very cool, trying to work it into my workflow. Uh, you guys should give it a shot too and uh, let us all know what you guys think. And that's it for today, so enjoy.